We've got on my right, we've got Nelis de Nerd, um, who will be doing most of the talk because of his colleague Dave is, is kind of an introvert person who doesn't say much. Um, but otherwise, here's Nelis, and he's an enthusiastic nerd who likes to share the things he's working at. And he's working at a computer emergency response team, or a CERT, especially focused on health. And that was that was incited just before SHA 2017. So after five years, we're really interested to see what ZCERT exactly did so far. And Nelis, it's up to you to tell everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So it's great to be here today, standing here. So uh, five years ago, I was a shuttle driver at SHA. And then I... Uh, I met some colleagues, uh, future colleagues actually, one of which is here in the room today. And uh, well, that escalated into this. So, who am I? Uh, I don't really like to talk about myself, but you know, it's important to, to, to introduce yourself a bit. A bit. So my uh, human name is Niels Beekhuis. Uh, most people from the hacker community probably know me as Nelis the Nerd. Uh, during my day job, I'm a DevOps engineer at uh, ZCERT. And uh, yeah, uh, today I am... Um, let's go back. Look at the speaker notes, Niels. Um, I'm also the team lead for the Hack the Health Village, uh, which is here on uh, MCH. Sadly, it's already tear down day, so we don't have much left. We have Dave. Dave is, Dave is uh, our, our shining star of the village. Um, and uh, in my free time, I'm a member of the Hackerspace BitLayer in Amersfoort, where I like to make uh, stuff out of cardboard, alpacas, for instance. So yeah, I, um, I'm here today to talk about ZCERT. And uh, why do you want uh, to talk about ZCERT? Because uh, just like MCH, we're a non-profit foundation. And uh, I thought it was important that the, the community, which we have, uh, uh, have a close connection to, uh, it's important to know who we are and what we do. So, um, but I do have a little bit of a warning. My presentation may contain memes. In fact, it does contain memes. Because having fun is a big part of MCH, so you know, I decided to have a little fun with this presentation as well. So, what is ZCERT? Some people here might know it, other people can be like, what is it? Well, it's not butter, but it is the Dutch Healthcare Computer Emergency Response Team. And in 2017, just before SHA 2017 actually, a group of organizations came together from the university hospitals, the general hospitals, mental health care institutions, and also the Ministry of Healthcare, because they saw a need for a cyber expertise center in cybersecurity for healthcare. And the reason because is a lot of medical devices these days have an internet connection or a network connection. And of course you have the medical device, uh, the the electronic patient dossiers. Uh, so cybersecurity is, is very important. Because if one of those devices gets hacked and they can't do their job anymore, right, lives are at risk. People can die. So ZZERT was created. And we were created as a non-profit foundation, uh, which is uh, very important, is a very important distinction. We are uh, also not part of the government. We are partly funded by the government, but mostly funded by our members. And our members are hospitals, uh, mental health care institutions, uh, youth health care, and uh, 
our, our founders gave us a mission. And that mission was to, uh, to, achieve, to strengthen the digital security of the Dutch healthcare. And uh, the way we achieve that is by scanning, but also by providing vulnerability information, uh, and to give advice on how to improve uh, that, uh, that security. Uh, the comparison we like to make is that we like the digital, uh, the digital firefighters. So firefighters, you might see them in the street when they drive around with their big flashy red cars and their big blue sirens on top of it. But firefighters do much more. Just like ZZ, we do a lot more. We do also do a lot, uh, a lot, I think mostly, our work in prevention. And uh, so we talk about how to, uh, how you not, how do you not get into a cybersecurity incident, but if you do get in a cybersecurity incident, of course you can call us. Sadly, we don't have a fire truck yet. Uh, it's one of my ambitions in life to, uh, to sometime have a fire truck for Zzert. Uh, it's on the backlog. I'm working on it. So yeah, just like I said, we, uh, we exist now for five years. And I was, I was, I was thinking, Six months ago, when I submitted this talk, I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to MCH, I'm going to do stuff there, and I want to show off my, my, uh, the awesome organization I work for. But the problem is, you know, what am I going to talk about? Talk about? Because there are so many awesome talks here about many technical subjects. So I was thinking, and I was thinking, and I submitted the proposal, and... Uh, I, uh, I had grand ambitions to talk about all these cool tools we created on the inside, you know, scanners and other vulnerability stuff. And then I thought, you know what? There are many more people who are better at this than me. So what should I talk about? And then I saw some inspiration on Twitter. And it talked about soft skills in cybersecurity. And that soft skills are hard skills are nice to have, you know. It's, it's good that you're proficient with Linux and uh, know how to uh, crack the latest Windows version. But soft skills are maybe a little bit more important because that's, that's, what, uh, that's what gets you uh, in the end of the day. So, then I decided, let's throw it around a little bit. Let's talk about soft skills. And these are the lessons I learned in the last five years. And the first lesson that I learned was it's important to know your members. So we have hospitals as members, but also mental health care institutions. They are both healthcare, but they are completely different. Because in hospitals you have uh, x-ray machines, you have MRI scanners, you also have infusion pumps. Uh, that's not so much the case in a mental health care hospital. You'll you will have, uh, for instance, security systems uh, to monitor the patients. You will have uh, maybe uh, risk bands to keep track of the patients. So yeah, it's really important to know what your customer needs and what your customer has to provide them with the right information. Because there is a lot of information out there. And if you just flood them with information, like we did in the beginning, eventually they are like, you know, I don't know what to do with this. This is too much information. Um, so we are now working on providing them with the right information by providing, for instance, information about the systems they have. I mean, most of the people probably use uh, Windows, so... You can take a guess at that, but uh, sometimes there is a little bit more specialized equipment, medical equipment, for instance, and we would, we would like to provide them with the right information for that. Um, another thing is build a community. And why build a community? Uh, well, we might be the expertise center for uh, cybersecurity in the healthcare, but we don't know everything. 
And uh, that's why it's so great that we have 300 members. And we have a chat plot platform on which all the members can log in and ask questions to each other. And we encourage our customers to log in to that platform as well. And if we don't know it, uh, then they can ask the question there. And somebody else might know it. Uh, and it's also nice to see the discussions, for instance, about a new, newly closed, disclosed vulnerability in a Windows or a medical device. And uh, see the discussion about, hey, how are, you, how are you going to tackle this? What are you going to do first? Stuff like that. That's, uh, and that's a great thing about the community, because we also learn from that. We learn from our community talking about stuff, and we learn uh, what we should do better next time. And the last lesson I learned was to connect with others. Not only with our members and fellow organizations, uh, with healthcare ISACs, government institutions, but also with communities like these. Communities like hackers who, who send us responsible disclosures about our member institutions. Um, it's important to connect because it's uh, you guys, you, you, find, you find the vulnerabilities. You make healthcare safer. And that's why it's important to connect. And that's also the reason I wanted to come here, to build this village we made called Hack the Health. And uh, with Hack the Health, we, we wanted to come here to show what we do, but also to connect with you guys. Because, like I said, you are an awesome community of individual, indiv well, individuals. And you are passionate about your subject, just like we, like we are passionate about our subject. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? That was fast. Yes, it went a little bit faster than I expected. You weren't nervous, were you? Yes. Oh, excellent. So let's ha guess come for some more questions. Come, please come to the microphones in the middle of the room, and we'll look at it. Nothing. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, I have two questions. The first one is, I saw you guys posing Dave a lot with a lot of signs. Which sign was your favorite for posing him? Oh, uh, that's probably this first one. Uh, it's, uh, it's sad on him, this is what happens when you do an unresponsible disclosure. <laughs> I think that sums it up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the second question I had is, you mentioned being a DevOps engineer, and then you guys are, you know, a cert team. How do those two things kind of work together? What is the actual day-to-day -day of a DevOps engineer on a cert team? So, uh, like, I, uh, like I said, we have a few tools. <laughs> hey. <laughs> nice, nice seeing you again. Should, uh, okay. If you have a question, I can come to you with the mic. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Day-to-day uh, -day stuff about, uh, of a DevOps engineer. Well, uh, I always say to people, I have the best job in the world. I might not drive a Tesla, but I have the best job in the world. Um, and uh, the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, I, uh, I basically uh, run the sys admin team together with my uh, colleagues. Uh, as a DevOps engineer, I'm mostly uh, for the Linux part of things. So we have a few homemade tools. We have a few uh, new tools as well, like OpenCut, that we are uh, trying to get, we are uh, getting running right now. And uh, I just make sure that uh, everything keeps running. And that, uh, you know, in case the shit hits the fan, <laughs> I'm there. Looking good, looking good. Mm. Thank you. So, next question. Yes, have you ever uh, had pushbacks from responsible disclosures just from your members? Yes. And how did you deal with that? Well, 
So uh, when we do uh, for the re responsible disclosures, we're basically the middle, the man in the middle party. So we try to negotiate with the responsible disclosure, uh, the one who does the responsible disclosure, and our members. Sometimes our members are very reluctant to do something, but then we will push them and be like, no, this is a real vulnerability. You need to stop, do stuff with, with this. Um, most of the time, we will, uh, we will get there. And uh, some, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of swag has been sent. So you got f quite a few good responses on that. Yeah, yeah. Most, uh, in the beginning, uh, the, the, we don't do this for every member. They have to uh, specifically sign up for, uh, at us for, uh, to do it. But uh, eventually, when we get it rolling, uh, the responses are only positive. <laughs> because they see it, well, it ha the people who do the response of the disclosure are not bad people. They see like, hey, they, will, they want to make us better. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty great. It is. Uh, back microphone, please. Hi there. Thanks uh, for the talk. Um, my question is, how do you measure success? Do you measure success at all? Because in the beginning of your talk, you said people could die if, uh, if things go wrong. That could be a KPI, number of lives uh, saved. It might be a bit hard. But uh, my question is a bit broader. So how do you measure success, and how do you measure success if you do? Um, I think the biggest measure of our success is how the, the members think of our services. If they think that our services are, or are of value. Um, I mean, we don't have insights on many, how many lives we have saved or how many ransomware incidents we have prevented. There's a... Uh, yeah. So I think that that's, that's the biggest measurement of our success. Of course, we have some, some hard KPI metrics that I don't know on the top of my head. But yeah. All right, thank you. If you don't, if you don't know them from the top of your head, they're probably not that relied on the KPI. So I think that's good. Think about the results. Yeah. Keeping our members happy and safe. That's exactly. That's the most important thing we do. The front mic, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk at first. It was uh, very interesting. Um, since there's some time left, I was just wondering, could you go to more details maybe about a example case or maybe something about the internal tools you were teasing all the time? Oh, <laughs> or maybe yeah. Like, so yeah. um, a few of the internal tools. Uh, so we are a non-profit foundation. So uh, money is, uh, we, we don't have a very big uh, pool of money. So we prefer to use open source tools. And one of the tools we uh, use a lot is the Hive, with, uh, together with Cortex. Uh, but we also are exploring some new options. Uh, for instance, we're looking at uh, Cyware. And uh, we also, of course, we are nerds. We like to do technical stuff. So we have a lot of uh, scripts we use here and there. Um, a lot of bash scripts, actually. Python, also very really nice. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's most of the stuff we use. Thank you. The back microphone, please. Uh, yeah, question from the internet, from Fission. Uh, perhaps, <laughs> yeah, you already briefly touched on this, but perhaps uh, yeah, I'd like for some uh, more depth to it. How did you get involved at CSERT? Yeah. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, I was a shuttle driver here at SHA 2017. That's where I met uh, Jeroen and Jasper, who is sitting there in the audience. He's a great uh, baker of pancakes, by the way. Sadly, it's closing day. Life skills, life skills. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was a shuttle driver, and I met him there, and I was talking to him about uh, CSERT. And he said, you know, this is a, a cool new the uh, theme we are uh, working with and starting with. So I, um, I applied there for my uh, uh, graduation internship uh, to uh, research how to use the Hive 
for phishing email research. And uh, well, it was a pretty successful graduation uh, internship. I uh, barely passed, but uh, <laughs> that was not because of the tool. That was because I'm, ve I'm a very bad writer. Uh, I'm a better talker, apparently. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I passed. I uh, did my presentation on a Friday. They said I passed. And then Zsert said to me, you know, we really like you, Niels, and uh, so do you like us? I said, yes. So I graduated on a Friday and I started on a Monday uh, working there. So yeah. And uh, I think that's also, uh, that's, that's one of the lessons I tried to, to incorporate at the end. So this community and these angel shifts, they are not just like for helping out the people. They could also provide something for you. Maybe your next job, maybe a next uh, opportunity for something else. So yeah. That is the best. You're, you're better than the heralds at asking for new, new angel shifts. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really good at that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for the talk. Um, one question, I'm not sure if you want to answer you, or you can just stay silent if necessary. Um, how do you deal with requests from uh, government or um, like organizations uh, like Secret Services uh, to like halt your um, probably zero days or uh, other disclosures you, you get uh, to use or abuse them for Secret Service purposes uh, and not forward them immediately to your customers? Well, fortunately, <laughs> we have never been in such a situation. We don't do active zero-day research. So, uh, fortunately, no, we have not been in that situation. Uh, and I, I am not sure what we would do if we would be in such a situation. So, yeah, I, I can't, really, uh, can't really answer it. I was wondering about how to start up or set up a cert. Like you have a incredible cert, a computer machine something for the Zorg. Could you get that's... slightly oh. closer to the mic, please? You have an oh, you have an awesome cert for yeah. the Zorg in Dutch or yeah. healthcare in yeah. English. Um, I was wondering, like in other organizations or maybe even on smaller companies, how to set up an internal cert of how to start, yeah, checking some more. Well, there is actually a great course uh, being developed by Enisa, I believe. I'm looking at Jasper. What was the course called again? Transits. Transits 1 and Transits 2. That basically teaches you how to set up a cert. It gives you all the, the procedures, the paperwork, uh, lists of who to call when it's in the middle of the night and you get hacked. Um, if you want to learn how to do that, I would recommend following one of those uh, trainings. Okay, thank you. Hi, Niels. Hi. I'm, the, I'm the other Jasper. Um, I've got a question. How secure do you consider medical x-rays to be? Uh, again? How secure would you consider medical x-rays? Medical x-rays. Um, honestly, uh, I don't know how to answer that uh, question. I, I, I don't work with that, those devices. I don't do research into them, so uh, I can't answer that, unfortunately. Uh, if you want to know that information, we have John from the Biohacking Village, who has a very strong opinion about that. <laughs> So, uh, oh, that's one of, the, the, one of the people I forgot to thank. We're here with Hack the Health, and we also got a lot of help from John from the Biohacking Village. Um, it was quite awesome. Uh, we, were, we were planning to organize this. We put it on the wiki, and all of a sudden, we got an email from John saying, hey, you're doing this. Want some help? Yeah. I just mentioned that you don't know how much you prevented. Um, but are you, so to say, um, still at the front? Do you see the attacks? And if so, um, do you notice where they come from? Is there increase, decrease over the last few months? You know, anything insightful on that? Um, I'm not sure about if there is an increase or decrease. We, we, we see a, a, sort of, uh, a stable flow of attacks. So. 
the biggest threat for healthcare is not uh, government-sponsored attacks. Uh, the biggest threat is actually ransomware. Government-sponsored attacks are mostly there to gather information, not to break things. Ransomware is there to break things, and that will that will interrupt the day-to-day uh, -day operation of the of the hospital. So that's that's one of the biggest things we we are watching out for. Fortunately, we do not have a big ransomware incident yet. This is not an invite, by the way. Um, um, so yeah, luckily. Uh, we have not seen that yet. And indeed, that is not a challenge. No. <laughs> challenge not accepted, please. <laughs> Niels, thank you so much for this wonderful talk on this situation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.